code it. So let me go on and share my screen. Now we are going to see the picking rules and then the moment request. In the beginning, picking rules and moment request, we are going to see now. <clears throat> So we are going to see the picking rules and moment request. And then if possible, item transaction equals also. Now, <clears throat> what exactly is a moment request we are going to see? So if you go to Fusion Inventory Documentation, once again, if you go to the Fusion Inventory Docs, Fusion Inventory Documentation now. So you'll be having one file called Moment Request. Moment Request is there. It is not visible for me. Moment Request is the file name. Moment Request. So, I have depicted our company's uh, work area actually. So, we have an inward staging area in which we will be having an inventory office over here. Uh, we will be having an inventory office. And then we will be having a QC quality control test bench. And we have a QA department very near to the inventory office. And then whenever a supplier vehicle comes in, he will now unload all the material onto the inward staging locators actually. We call them as inward staging locators. So the QA department will now randomly pick certain things on the QC test bench and then they will now perform a quality test structure. Not on everything, but on something. So if they find that out of 50, some two, they will now take up on the test. And then if it is okay, the entire 50 will be moved to QC passed area actually. The quality control passed area. And then whatever is not passed, they will now mark, will now park it over here. I was a metals manager in the 90s actually. And then I used to visit this area and then I will now have a look at it. There is a yellow tag there and then they will now write what for it has now been rejected actually. So in the monitor top, there will be a small crack. I will ask him to switch on. Right? When I switch it on, the monitor is working perfectly. And for the small crack, if I send it back to the supplier, he will now take another three weeks for me to send it back. And that time is too much for me. I cannot afford it. So what I will do is, are yaar, rejection copy yellow on there. You, it may be rejected, it doesn't matter, but you take it. So, the inventory people will be returning the materials to suppliers only upon the requester's confirmation. I need the material. The requester is the person who demanded the material. And then, if I say it's okay, then what happens? They don't have any control at all. The inventory people will not send it back to the supplier. So, I'm the ultimate authority. The man who is creating the demand in the form of a purchase requisition, which is in fact converted, in, it is later converted into purchase order and then given to the supplier. So I am the big man on the P2P life cycle actually. The requester is a big one. So I will say, take it and then what happens, it will come over here. Had it been a raw material, that was, it will be put onto various raw material stores actually. RMS1, RMS2, RMS3, RMS4. So we have a put away process in the manufacturing and then that will be basically uniformly loading all the raw material stores. And then this is called the work in process area. This is a place where manufacturing takes place. So here I will be having sales orders as well as forecast, which will be flowing into the planning department. The planning department is going to balance the demand against the supply actually. And sales orders will be there and then forecast. So two inputs they will have now. Sales orders are actual demand, forecasted demand. So both of things based upon each. So they will be having uh, different people called item planners, sub inventory planners, or planners in the department. And then they all to put together, they will now create the job order in with you. So if we have a sufficient stock, they will not create it. If we don't have a sufficient stock, based upon these two inputs, they will be creating the discrete job orders. So once when the job order is created, 
the manufacturing unit is not going to manufacture it and then once when the completion is now completed it will now come into the finished goods stores fgs1 fgs2 fgs3 fgs4 like that for the delivery they will be stocking it like that guys now once when the customer sales order comes in what happens we will be having a planner the planner will be basically what happens he is now going to do allocate now. let us say fgs1 is having a january stock this is having a february stock this is having a march and then april stock so this is the oldest stock so he will not try to clear the oldest stock so he will be having a picking rule the picking rule is configured in such a fashion that whatever has come first from the manufacturing area you allocate first you go down okay and then whatever has come last will be allocated late so that what happens metal will be continuously flowing so for normal materials it will be last in first out but certain items will be first in first out fine uh, so uh, sorry majority of the metal will be first in first out whichever has come first to be uh, depleted from the inventory but certain items will be working as a last in first out i will tell you so we are manufacturing hammam soap hammam soap is now around 50000 soaps are available in fgs one now a new fragrance has been introduced by lux actually so i am now creating a new revision so revision b is now going getting created so on revision b i have started manufacturing hammam soaps which are now matching the lux fragrance actually so i got only 5000 pieces on the b revision i have around 50000 pieces on a revision so whatever is entered into my finished goods stores last will be issued to the customers as per the revision basis the latest revision will be given to the customer because if i give the older revisions i will not be in business at all the customer will not again come are yaar cheapo this is not having that much of a fragrance like a lux no i don't want your hammam to me a close call right so you will go away so in such cases what happens to catch the customers we will now give the latest products only to the customers so we will now remain in the market for certain controls like revision control will be having a last in first out whereas for all of the things it will be first in first out so my picking rule will be an amalgamation of l lifo and fifo put together so it will pick up on that give it to the customer so once when the picking rule comes in picture what happens it will be allocated it will be brought to the staging area this is the staging area so in our company what happens we will not clean the finished goods we will not take the net weight pack it in boxes containers or lps take the gross weight affix the name plate details and then we will now mark the statutory warning of handle with care etc etc on the consignment and then keep it ready for ship confirmation so once when the vehicle comes in we will now lift it and then keep it on the vehicle and then send to the customers so industry to industry the whole process varies sometimes we only buy and sell we will not manufacture it. in this case what happens you are not going to perform a cross docking cross docking is from the inward staging area to the outward staging area it will be cross dock and then afterwards we will now remove the supplier stickers and then we will now affix our stickers on this now and then send it to the customer so this generic business process is not suitable for every industry and industry to industry to vary i have now depicted my industry so here the salient part of this particular uh, topic is what we are going to see how the picking rule is going to work and then how we are going to allocate so the picking rule is now will now help us to allocate actually the picking rule will be helping helping us to allocate from which subimmetry i have to allocate so that is what it is right so are you comfortable on the generic working of a plant now <clears throat> any questions on this now you got it as and when any questions comes up what about it you please ask me so i am now going to create a picking rule which is now going to what on the thing so let us go there let us now simulate this one first of all we are going to simulate this exercise one and all the long go this place and then here i am now going to simulate it i will now go to the fusion inventory docks rather fusion i will now go to the fusion inventory docks now i go to the fusion inventory documentation so i will now say moment request lab exercise will be there we go on the moment request and then there is a moment request lab exercise is there No. So, moment request lab exercise. So, let me open it up. Moment request lab exercise on the infusion unit documentation. So, let me open it up. Moment request lab exercise. 
variable to empty. So here, uh, I'm now going to simulate it. I'm now going to create an item. Now. So the item is going to be what we are now going to use uh, Dyna 1 as well as Dyna 2 also. I will not have two such subunitaries. And then the item will be lot controlled now. Right? Lot control is the one which I am going to use it now. Right? And then locator controlled also. Okay? So locator controlled, I am not going to put it on the item. Fine. Item will be only lot controlled and then I load it. So we can have four such controls and then we can use it for picking rules. For the picking rule, we can use the locator control. We can use the lot control. We can use the revision control. And then we can use the sub inventory control. So locator, lot, revision, and sub inventory are the three things. So in this exercise, I'm now going to test on the locators. I'm now going to test on the lot. Fine. And then I'm going to test on the sub inventories. Revision is a lab exercise. So three of the things on the picking rule, I'm going to create it. So first of all, let me create the things. Here. So we have a Dyna 1. Let me create the Dyna 2 sub inventory first of all. So let me create the Dyna 2 sub inventory. <clears throat> So go there. We will now go to sub inventories now. What is the setup and maintenance? And then here I am now going to create the sub inventory Dyna 2. Click on it. Go there. So click on search. So manage sub locators. Manage sub inventory locators. So Dyna 1 is already there. I click on plus now. Fine. Let me create Dyna 2. So it's a G01. So Dyna. It's a dynamic control actually. Dyna is not getting created. So it means what? We can even very well pull a rack and then keep it on the track actually. So we'll now say make this as dynamic entry. Location is G01. And then I will now choose my, my segment to move again. G03. So click on save and close. So both the things are now created. So in Dyna 1, I'm now going to what? Give the locator order. Right? Dyna 1 has got locator 2 and 22 now. So I will now say you pick up from 2. If the material is not available, you pick up from 2. Right? So the picking order is 1. And then picking order is 2. Right? I will now go on and go to the Dyna 2 now. And then go to the manage locators now. So click on search. I will not show you all the locators. I will not show you three locators on this one. Man, locators. Oh, not Dyna 2. Dyna 1. Dyna 1. Dyna 1. So keep your cursor on the Dyna 1. Click on the manage locators now. So I will now say 2 and 22. I am going to use it. Not 2, 3, 4. 2. I go there. Click on edit. Give the top priority to this one. Picking orders 1. Picking orders 1. Okay. So picking orders 1. The type will be used by the warehouse management system. Right? We don't want it at all. We can leave it blank. Type will not be used by inventory. So we can leave it blank. So the picking order for the two is one now. Fine, save and close now. And then for 22, it's two rows. Select the rule, click on any two. So the picking order is two. So the lower the number, higher the priority. That is the logic now. Fine, lower the number, higher the priority. Okay. So here, you know, give it a So Dyna 1 is now having a, a locator order of one. And then this 22 has got a locator order. <clears throat> and then afterwards, uh, sub inventory. Fine, go there. So, Dyna 1, you pick it up, and then uh, afterwards, Dyna 2. Fine. Sub inventory, it will be 1, and then this is the second one. The sub inventory orders I'm going to give. Fine, click on the now. Fine. Locator orders we are given now. So, Dyna 1, you go there, select it, and then here, you will now edit it. Now. Click on edit. Now. In this place, I'm now going to give the picking order as one. So the picking order, I go there, give a save and close now. So Dyna 1 is 1 now. Fine, Dyna 1 is 1. And then Dyna 2 is 2 now. I'm now going to Dyna 2. And then click on edit now. The picking order, I'm giving it as 2. This is the picking order. So I have simulated the sub inventory picking order as well as locator picking orders. For this Dyna 1 is 1 now. Dyna 2 is 2. And then within Dyna 1, 2 to 2 is now 1, 22 to 2 is 2. And for Dyna 2, I'm not giving any orders here. I'm not giving any orders. Okay. So this simulation on the sub inventories and locators are complete. I'm now going to create a MR test item. And then I will now make it as lot controlled. 
lot controlled i am going to put it down so lot controlled one i am going to put it down so that will be the one and then i am now going to receive these four material transactions i am going to give it <clears throat> go there so let us now go there and then do it now. <clears throat> so let us now go and then create find the sub inventory and locator orders are now provided over here on fine account now and then let us now go and then create item get on it you go to the product management and then go to the product information management and then now you are going to create an item get on it get on it so this is a moment request test item now i will now put the master or over here so click on okay now Item is what G zero one underscore M R underscore test. Right. I will now say it's a G zero one underscore M R underscore test item now. I am going to just take it. I will go to the specifications now. It is going to be lot control. No other control. There are four controls are there: serial, lot, revision, and locator. For this exercise, I am going to use only lot control. So go to the inventory. One item can have all the four controls actually. What is the full control? I will now say MR underscore one not. I am not going to use it. I will not put my own numbers now. Shelf life. I am not considering it in this example actually. I guess it. So full control is a MR test item as far as lot is concerned. So go to the associations and then let us now associate with the child or go to the actions and then go to self and admin. Organizations what G zero one enter it. Child or So click on apply and then click on done now, and that's it. I'm going there. So we will now save it now. Fine. G zero one underscore MR underscore test is now ready. I'm going there. Save and close. Item is ready with the lot control now. Now I'm going to receive now. I'm going to receive as per this plan. I'm not going to make two transactions now. Two transactions I'm going to make. So let us now receive it actually. What is the home icon? <clears throat> And then click on the supply chain execution now. And then I will now go to inventory management. Click on it. And then go to the manage item quantities. Rather create miscellaneous transaction. Now. So drop it down. I will now go to miscellaneous receipt. Ten iPhone hundred iPhone thousand. Your tab. Is yes. So click on plus now. I will not drop it like that. G zero one underscore MR moment request test item. Click on the edit now. So here I am not going to put a lot also. I am not going to transact for hundred quantities on Dyna one actually. On two 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 Dyna one two 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 I am going to transact for hundred quantities. So sub inventory is Dyna one. So the locator is two star two star two. And then after you put the lot, then afterwards you only have to put the quantity actually. The lot is what? It is lot one zero three actually. Fine. I will go there. I will now say G zero one four lot one zero three. And then click on it. I will now go to hundred quantities. So it is lot one zero three of hundred quantities. I will go and find click on it. Click on OK. So I am now simulating my exercise actually over here now. So click on plus. That is the first transaction. So again, G zero one underscore M R. Go to the edit details now on the line. So the second transaction is what? Again on the same lot on the dynamic, but this time what happens on twenty two twenty two twenty two? Dana one only. Sub inventory is Dana one. <clears throat> Sub inventory is Dana one. Locator is twenty two star twenty two star twenty two. Who locator is going to be in the front? Lot number is same lot now G zero one underscore lot one zero three. You see the lot is same actually on twenty two look at the twenty two look at the quantity is hundred. So the second transaction simulation is now going on now. So click on OK. The third transaction. Thank you, Mr. Smart. I'm going to go on the third transaction. So G zero one underscore M R. I'm going to give it a name. And then click on the edit details. Go there. So third transaction, what lot is one zero four, but Dyna two and then thirty three now. Dyna two thirty three one zero four now. <clears throat> now go there, choose Dyna two. So Dyna two, I am not going to choose it now. 
Locator is 33 now. Find 33 star, 33 star, 33. This is the Python. I have put a star actually here. I will not put the lot. So it is 104 lot. The G01 underscore lot 104 now. It is found. All transaction point is under now. 104 now. If I'm making any mistake, please then and there tell me. Otherwise, what happens is the simulation, if it is wrong, then we will not be able to achieve the desired results actually. So click on OK now. And then click on plus now. Go there. And then go to this place. G01 underscore MR. And then give it now. And then click on the edit details. And go inside now. Go to this place. The fourth one is 103 lot. And Diana 244. Diana 244. And then 103 lot now. So sub inventory, drop it down and then make it as a Diana 2. Diana 2. And then locator is what? 44 locator. So here is a 44 locator. So Diana 2 is not having any locators. I have to create these two locators actually. Uh, I think I would have created a door. 44 star. 44 star 44. You can even dynamically create that. Actually. No need to do it. Perfect. So during transaction itself, you can very well create because they are dynamic in nature. Now. So we can very well create on this. 44. And then go there. Lot. Lot is 103 now. Lot is 103 now. So 103 lot. So I will not go there. It is a G01 underscore lot 103. And then I will not go there. Do the simulation very properly. If you make a mistake, it will not work at all. The four transactions, I am not going to make it as such. So click on it. Click on OK now. I hope that I have not made any mistake. Now. So 222, 33, 44. So 222, 33, 44. I might have given the appropriate sub inventory is now. Fine. <clears throat> okay. That's it. So it is now simulated. So we have received it. Now we are going to allock it for the customers actually. They, they are all uh, they are all come from manufacturing and then we are going to allocate it for the customers actually. So how we are going to allocate it? We are going to write a picking rule. So click on submit. So the receipt is now made now. Transactions complete. We'll now go on and have a look at the receipts now. Manage item quantity is the one. So go there. And then here in this place, you can go and then query for the item. So it's a G01 underscore MR. So we are going to query it. Now click on search. We will now find the quantities. 400 quantities are available. We can open it. Expand it. It will show you. On Dana 1, we can expand it. It will show you. On 32, 22 locators, we have a stop now. And then similarly locate it. And then this is on the lot 103. And then in 22, we have a lot 112. So 2 and 22 have got the same lots. And then in this place, if you explain it, Dana 2. On 33, 33, we have 104. And then afterwards in 44, 44, we have got 103. So we have, it works actually. So now we are going to allocate. For allocation, we are going to use the picking rules. So we are going to use the picking rules. So let us go there and then define our picking rules. So we go there. I will now go to the setup and maintenance, and then I am now going to create a picking rule. This is a very tough one, and then uh, this has to be done with the help of what I was with, the, with the, after discussing with the end client actually. Because here, material issues are coming into picture now. Which one you want to issue first? Actually? Right. Go there. So if you see the virtual task, you want to make sure this. Go there, click on it. And then if you go on and see the moment request now, fine. So which one has to be picked and then given to the customers actually? So that is where the real. Uh, a challenge lies in you. So the company will be having a different ways of picking. Fine, LIFO picking, FIFO picking, everything is there now. Fine. So on which we are going to decide on this. So go there. And then let us now decide on that way of picking. So it's manage pick percentage. Rule percentage is an entry now. So manage picking rule is the one. Now we are going to create a picking rule. So let me create a new picking rule. I will now say it's a G01 underscore pick underscore rule. So I will not take a copy of it and then put in the description. Now I am now going to have what the priorities. There are four priorities on which what happens that we can very well do the sorting actually. So we are going to sort it. <clears throat> so we are going to sort it once. So uh, we have four transactions. These four transactions have been performed from let's say, manufacturing. So now I'm not going to choose the lot 
as the first criteria. Ascending lot, I am going to allow. So I am not going to lot and then ascending. Lot ascending means what? It is now going to shuffle the transaction numbers. One, two, three, four will be shuffled based upon the lot ascending. Right? So lot ascending is what? So it will not check up. Right? So it is what? One is first actually. And then afterwards, it will not check on the one. And if there is not sufficient material, it will not check on the second transaction. And then if there is not sufficient material in the second transaction, it will not check on the fourth transaction. And then if there is not sufficient available, then it will not check on the third transaction. Is it clear now? Based upon the lot ascending, it will now shuffle the transaction numbers as 1, 2, 4, 3. Because 1 is 1, not 3, 2 is 1, not 3, and then 4 is also 1, not 3. And then afterwards, 1, not 4 will come into picture. Afterwards, 1, not 4 will come into so, incoming material will be sorted as what? 1, 2, 4, 3 for allocation. So, everything has got 100 quantities. If the customer wants 80 quantities, it will not allocate from transaction 1 itself. If the customer wants 120 quantities, it will not pick up 100 from 1 and then 20 from 2. If the customer wants 210 quantities, it will not pick 100 from this, 100 from this, and then 10 from this place now. Is it clear? Any doubts on this now? So, if you have a lot wise ascending, then this is the way it is going to be. In the lot ascending, uh, we can, in the lot, when you want to sort the incoming transactions, we have got multiple options on the lot. Lot first expiry, first option. Whichever lot is able to expire first, that will be given top priority. Or whichever lot has come first, that will be given a top priority. Right? And then the lot ascending number and then lot descending number. So for easiness, I am now using the lot ascending number. Right? Lot ascending number. So naturally, 103 will be coming the first, and then 104 will come in the picture. Anybody has got a question on this, please ask me now. Because if you don't understand it, it is a very important topic actually. Right? Allocating of the incoming material actually. So on the lot, we have got four such options are available here. Lot first expiry, first out, first in, first out. Lot ascending and lot descending. For this exercise, I'm using a simple one of lot ascending. Lot number ascending, actually. So let us go there and then put it up and go that it. I will not choose lot ascending as the first one. Next is what? Sub-inventory ascending. So on the sub-inventory ascending, if you see, this 1, 2, 3, 4 will be further shuffled, actually. It is first sorted and then you're going to do further sorting on this one. Sub-inventory ascending. So if you see this now, some people are saying, so we have what? One is the top priority, then the next one. So Dyna 1 and Dyna 2. So on this place, what happens? Dyna 1 is coming. So we'll now go there. One. Uh, see, the competing one on this now. Right? First three belongs to the same lot. So we have to subsort on this now. Right? One, two, and four. You see, one, two, and four. So one, two, and four do not have any further uh, subsort required if it is ascending one. So here, what happens? It will be saying one here, and then two here, and then again four here. So again four here. Because these two belongs to what? Sub-inventory one, and then this belongs to sub-inventory uh, uh, two, and so there is no further thing at all. In this. And then afterwards, further subsort on the locator actually. And then, so if you have revision also, it will be further subsorted on the revision also. Lot, sub-inventory, locator, and revision are the four levels of sorting and subsorting of all the incoming transactions. Actually. So it's again a very big one. So you have to think, think, think. Sometimes lot ascending itself is sufficient in which what happens, you will not give only one priority. The remaining three priorities will not give at all, depending upon the record. Lot is sufficient, sir. I don't want any other priority for the subsorting. And the sub means what? Here, these two belongs to one lot, and then this is another lot. So if you want to shuffle between one to four, you can shuffle if you want. Otherwise, you will not leave it as such. This will not come into picture at all. The second level of shuffling and then third level of shuffling will not come into picture. So it's a very complex one. And then you have to think, 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 and then decide upon how you want to allocate the incoming material actually. So here, sub-inventory also, I will not put as ascending now. I will not say sub-inventory as ascending. The third level is what? Locator as ascending. Locator as a well. So I am now using these three things for my testing purposes. In reality, you have to sit, sit and then do it. So if a customer wants, let us say, 120 quantities, so you have to allow partial picking also. 100 from this lot and then 100 from the next one. 
So you always allow, allow partial picking. Otherwise, the total allocation will fail. If you don't have a material, it will not allocate at all. So to allocate it, we need a material. So we are doing it. Don't enforce it now. You know, have a look at it a later. Click on it. And then what happens? I'm now going to give a save and close. Now. I will not what happens? Save and close. So my Z01 picking rule with the different priorities with the partial allocation is now ready. So it's not done. <clears throat> So now I'm now going to assign it to what? So click on the manage assignments. This picking rule can be assigned for specific ones actually. So click on the manage assignments now. I click on the manage assignments. And then I will now give a plus one. So click on the plus one. I'm now going to assign it actually. Okay. Organization is what? G011. You tap now. Sequence is one now. Okay. So picking rule is G01. And then you tap. The picking rule is going to come up now. G01. Oh God, I made two picking rules. Ha, what is my picking rule here now? Recently created before. Save and close. Oh Come on a bit now. Uh, the picking rule. The G01 picking rule. Right? I now just made picking rule. Now. So click on done. That. So G01 pick rule is there. Picking rule is also there. Now. So do the one I did. G01 pick. Where is the G01 here? G01 pick. So let me query it now. So, uh, priority is what? Lot P4. Oh, not this one at all. It's a pick rule, actually. And I'm doing a different, different one. So, I give a cancel. G01 pick rule. So, uh, I have to choose the G01 pick rule, actually. Click on it. What is this? Okay. Lot ascending, subunit ascending. Lot ascending, subunit is this one. G01 pick rule is the one which I'm going to use. Lot ascending, sub inventory ascending, and then locator ascending. G01 pick rule, which I already use now. So I will now open up the G01 pick rule now. <clears throat> let us now disable it actually. G01 picking rule, let me inactivate it now so that I will not get confused at all. G01 pick one pick rule is only required. So what is G01 pick rule? So this is what it is ascending, ascending, ascending. I get a cancel now. So select this G01 pick rule and then go to the manage assignments now. G01. And then click on plus. G01 pick rule. Organization is G011. Sequence is one now. So picking rule. Ah, it is already existing now. Right? There is already one uh, assignment which is existing if I cancel now. So go there. We have an assignment existing. How come? We go and then search for it. If you click on search for that, the assignment is existing the same now. Picking rule is there. Remove it now. Click on search. Ah, ah, ah. On the pick rule. G01 pick rule. No? And the thing is there actually. G01 pick rule, the thing is there actually. So click on done. So uh, manage assignments of this November. Manage assignments. Go there. Click on plus now. So organization is G011, then you have sequence is one now. One, it is not accepting it. I don't know why it's so. I will now give two now. Picking rule is G01, pick rule now. And pick rule, I have used now. Okay. And then here, I can assign it to multiple criteria actually. I can assign it to a customer or a UIM class or a source subunitary or destination subunitary or whatever it is. So in this case, for this example, I will now assign it to items. G01 underscore MR and then data for this item I designed it. And then make it as active. So this picking rule of what? Lot ascending, sub inventory ascending. You cannot make the rule assignment active because the rule itself is not active. The rule is not active, so it's not possible. Fine, give a save and close. So we have to make the rule active first of all. And then there's an assignment. Okay, fine. Go that click on the click on the map. And then we'll now make the rule active. Fine, go that click on it. I will now edit the rule now and then make it as active. Rule is now active now. So once when the rule active, then the assignments can be made active. So click on seven close. And now I'm going to make the assignments active. Okay. So go to the manage assignments. And then you want uh, so click on edit and then make it active. So click on seven close. You know, assign to this. Now we are going to test it now. We are now going to create a movement request for this and then test it actually. So what we'll do is we will now make a movement request for 60 quantities. 
and then we will now see how the system allocates it actually. We are going to have a look at the allocation. Actually. So it will be allocating it on what? Dyna 1 and then 2 to 2. This is the one we are going to allocate. Other one. 60 to 1 will be allocated. So go there and then I will not do it. <clears throat> so let us now check this allocation now. So let us now create a movement request for this and then test it actually. What is space? Let us now create a movement request. What is space? What is space? So this is the one which you need actually. I'm working on demo, but this is okay. Submit level is not required. And then we will now go and then get a movement request. Click on the home icon and then you go to the supply chain execution and then you go to the inventory management. So click on it. What is space? And then here we are now going to create a moment request. Manage moment request is the one that we will be making a moment request. We are now going to move it from our finished good staging area. Fine, go click on it now. So uh, I will. I need one uh, what is called a stage sub inventory also. Fine, go so let us now create a stage sub inventory for this now. Fine, go so first of all, let us now create a stage sub inventory. Click on it. Set up and maintenance, and then we are now going to create a stage sub inventory. Click on it. So click on search now, and then I will now say manage. Sub percentage, local percentage in the entry now. Manage sub inventory locators. And then let us now have one staging sub inventory. Fine, click on plus no point. I will now say simply stage. So from that, I'm now going to ship it to the customers actually. So take a couple of it and put it in the description. So everything is okay. And location is easy. G01. Now. Nothing else is required for this exercise. Fine, click on second plus. It's a simple staging sub inventory. We now create it. Now we go there and then we will now create a moment request for this. So go to the supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management. And then here I am now going to create a moment request for you. And then I will now go to the manage moment request. And from there, what happens? We are now going to get a moment request. So click on plus now. So moment request number is coming. I can even override it. And the system allocates automatically a number. I will now say G01 underscore MR underscore one. So I can even have my own numbering. So take a copy of it and then put in the description. Now. Transaction type is what? There are two types of transactions which you can do. Now. One is what? Movement request transfers to your staging sub inventory or movement request issue for a project actually. For a project, when you are issuing it, what happens? It will now go to a specific location. Now. The issue will be governed by a location, whereas a transfer will be for a specific sub inventory. Now. So in this case, what happens if you see moment request? So here we are now moving it to a staging sub inventory actually. Had it been an issue, it will be for a specific location for a project actually. So you're now going to go for what? A staging sub inventory. So I know make it as what? Moment request transfers. So which is the SOAP sub inventory? What happens when you go there? We will now leave it to the system to allocate. This is where the power of allocation comes in now. So Based upon our picking rule, it will now allocate from where you wanted to bring in now. Fine. The sub inventory, it will now go and then decide now whether it is going to be from Dyna 1 or Dyna 2 or whatever it is. So, based upon our ascending, 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 the picking rule, it will automatically allocate. So, leave the source blank so that the power of allocation can be felt actually. Destination you give. Fine. Where you going to bring it? In stage, I want to show you. So, source is nothing but a power of allocation. We allow the system to decide from where you want to bring in. So, click on plus now. So, here I am now going to request for 60 quantities of this item. So, click on plus in the line level. <clears throat> I am now going to request for 60 quantities of another product. So, item is what? G01 underscore MR. You can give it an item. So, I will now go for a quantity of 60 actually. And again, since I don't do any source, the source will be blank here now. And then destination stage is coming. Source is blank. The system will allocate the source. I'm going to go it. I will now give a save. So G01 M MR1. I'm now I want 60 materials to be moved to the staging area now. Friend. So I want a material to be moved to the staging area. That is what I need. So I now go there. MR1 for this particular item is now coming up. I click on save and then submit also. So the moment you submit it, it will get approved automatically. Actually, I click on submit now. So the moment you get it, it will get approved automatically. Moment request was submitted actually. So go there and now you go and then make a search on this area. Fine. This is the organization G011. And click on search now. Yeah, yeah. Moment records item will not it. You need one of the things to be filled up now. Let me put the item and then make a search. 
So the first movement request is now pre-approved actually. Now I am not going to call our thing and then I will not ask it to or I say, allocate it actually. So the, uh, the, the picking rule will be called and then it will be allocating it. So once when it allocates, what happens? It will be allocating as per this now. It will not allocate from Dyna 1, from 2 to 2, 60 quantities is going to allocate. So we are now going to call that the program which is now going to do the allocation of my material based upon the picking rule. Now. Our picking rule is governed by the yeah, G01 underscore pick underscore rule now. So if the system will automatically pick up because we already done the assignments also. So that will be picked and then it will be allocating this is Dana 1, 2, 2, 2. So what I do is I go there, I will now right click and then duplicate now. I will now go space, duplicate it. And then let me run the ESS job. You go to the tools. And then here, I will now go to the scheduled process. And then here, I am now going to run the ESS job. Click on the schedule pass. The, the ESS job name is print move. And then give it a tag. I am going to print move on the main. Print movement request, pixel it report. Now. I click on OK now. I am doing it. So organization is what? G01. Movement request number is what? G01. And then you give it a tag. The number will be coming automatically. So if you have a range of movement requests, you can even run it also. The remaining, you can leave it trapped. And then here, whatever on the bottom, I will now say, release approved lines. I will now make it as this. This is now going to allocate, actually. If you don't do it, it will only print. It. So release approved lines, if you make it as this, the system will now allocate this one now. It will allocate Dyna 1, 2 to 2, it will now allocate for moving it. What happens? You move it from Dyna 1 to stage now. That is what it will going to say. Right? Or from 2 to 2, 60 counters. Go there. So make the release as approved lines is just no point. It will be allocating it. So the power of allocation comes into picture because our picking rule is already configured for ascending, ascending, ascending. You see, it is ascending for the lot, ascending for the submittery, ascending for the locator. So this is where you will now discuss with the end client about how you want to configure your picking actually for four different parameters. So I will now say release approved lines is this and then click on submit now. So by submitting it, what happens? The print movement request pick slip report is going to allocate and then print also. And click on submit now. And it will be allocating and then print. Click on OK. The allocation process is now started. Now you can click on it. You can now see it. This is now running. Print movement request pick slip report is now running. The ESS job is running. Enterprise scheduler service job of print movement request pixel report is running now and will not complete it. So it will now print on the printer also. You select it and then have a look at it. Now it is now going to print on the printer also. You go there and then there will be output republish button is coming. Go there. It will be printing actually. So here uh, for seeing it, we are now republishing it. Select the line and then output republish is there and click on the republish. So here I will now click on the wheel icon now and click on the wheel icon and then export it to PDF. I'm going to export it to PDF. Let me export it to PDF and click on save now. And then have a look at this. <coughs> Open this, show in the folder and then double click on it. So movement request fix slip report is there. It is now saying organization so and so, movement request number is so and so, all of so this is the parameter we have passed now actually. Release approved line is yes, no, the parameter we have passed it and go down and have a look at it. The end of report, what is this? It has not allocated anything at all. Ah, it is allocated. I have now gone through fast actually. So the next page is this now. Here's the next page. So you can now see this is a Dyna 1 sub inventory, 222, two, two, it has allocated. And then what happens? This is the lot now. Dyna 2, 2 to 2, and then 1 not 4. And we should do that. So Dyna 2, so what is it? It is Dyna 1. Dyna 1, 2 to 2. Dyna 1, 2 to 2, 60 quantities is allocated. Now, this is reserved for one moment actually. So it will no more be available actually. Are you clear upon this now? Any doubt on this now? Fine. For ascending, ascending, ascending. The picking rule is allocated Dyna 1, 2, 2, 2. No. Have a look at it. Fine. The sub inventory is there. The locator number is there. It has to move to stage now. Fine. 60 quantities are there. And then this is the lot number. Now, 
any doubts on this now is a very tough topic is a uh, understanding is really very very difficult actually now we go there and then let me make a change on the picking rule now right it is now in the ascending 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 now it is ascending ascending and descending i am going to make it now when the locator is going to be descending so if it is going to be descending on the third one on the locator actually so it will now pick up what happens the two first and then if it is no material then only it will come the first one so in this case what happens on the dyna one it will now allocate 222 22 22 22 it will allocate for 61 this so locator is as a descending so it will now see whether the what's called the highest number will be allocated and then if there is not sufficient quantity since partial picking is enabled it will also allocate on number one also so i am going to choose this now so let us now make it as a descending and then check on this now is a very tough topic <laughs> is not at all easy actually i know that but what to do uh, uh, actually i don't have i have to what about to give you practice time also but i am not having so much of a time in my hand now fine uh, tomorrow i have to complete this inventory <laughs> what to do go that it on it I don't know the space of my own. What is it? Yeah. This is okay. This minimize it now. I know that you can. So now I will now change my picking rule now. I'm not going to make a change on the picking rule. I'm not going to do that. So here I will now change the picking rule. Now. I will only demonstrate only up to this bigger. The rest are lab exercises because. i don't have time to what am i say do on the, all these things now click on it ah go to the home now <clears throat> now i am going to change the picking rule now fine for ascending ascending and descending actually go there click on done now go to home pop you know i'm going to make it all click on the home icon and then we are ready here on time click on it so go to the manage picking rules now fine click on search now So manage percentage, pick percentage, rule percentage. So manage picking rule now. Here I will now choose this rule now. Find the one how much I am going to do now. Find click on the manage assignments on this one. I am going to click on it. So here I will now edit it. Oh sorry. Here what happens? I have to change the picking rule now. Find what I click on it. I have to change the picking rule. Now. Click on the pick rule. I have to change it to what? locator ascending now and that is what i wanted now locator descending rather i want to make a change of what locator descending now. so for which what happens i will now uh, the what happens the active button has to be removed then only we can edit it actually but since the rule is already assigned you cannot edit at all so first assignments has to be under removed now then only the rule can be edited actually so you go there i will now go to the manage assignments and then select it and then click on edit now i will now inactivate the assignment actually the assignment is inactivated so we'll close then only the rule can be edited actually the assignment is inactivated now you go there and then click on it now rule can be edited actually if you remove active we can edit it now. remove active previously it has grayed out in the board so locator descending is a change i am making it now now you make it as active when you are save and close if this is not active i cannot do the assignment also right if you go there if you go and then click on edit now you cannot make it active because the rule itself is not active so the rule itself is not active we cannot uh, what happens we cannot make it as active actually the rule is not active so don't do it give a cancel now so let us now make the rule active first of all and then afterwards assignment active for as for unassigning it is a reverse way actually i will now go and then edit it now let us now make the rule active now So ascending, ascending, descending is the one which I am going to test now. Right? Click on it, home. click on second close now. You know that? Now you go there, click on the manage assignments now. Right? Click on the manage assignments, and then here you go there, click on it, and then I will now go and then edit on this one. So click on edit, and then now I can make it as active. Same close. Now the set is now complete. Let us now create one more movement request on this one. We are going to create one more movement request. Right? So click on done now. We will now create one more moment request. So go to this place. We will now create the second moment request for this. So we will now go to the manage moment request. So once when the material is allocated, that is reserved. Nobody can touch it actually. 
the fifth one plus one point, and I'm going to make the second one point plus one. I will now say G01 underscore MR underscore two. <coughs> I will now take a copy of it and then put in the description. Paste it again. And the transaction type is movement request. The destination sub inventory is stage now. Stage. And then click on plus one point. Go to this place. G01. Go there. And then MR. And then give it a tag now. The line uh, item is not really visible to find. It will expand it to one. So I will again request for 60 quantities. Now it is ascending, ascending, descending. Now I know that you want it. That's it. I go there and then say this time I'm going to submit MR2 now. So the source sub inventory leave it blank. That is where the system's the power of allocation comes into picture actually. So click on submit now. So you know MR2 is now submitted. Find whether you want it. And then if you make a search, it will not show body things. Item is what G01 underscore MR and then give it tab now. And then click on search now. So yeah, MR2 is already up there. Now let us again run the concurrent now. So we'll run, run the concurrent again now. <coughs> uh, in the picking rule assignments, where are the concurrent? There are so many <laughs> things are open. I don't know which is there and what now. Uh, the concurrent, I have kept it now. The monitor process is what. Yeah. So click on the schedule new process. This is again a print moment request. This time I'm going to run it for what? MR2 now. Organization is what? G011. So it is G01 and then give a tab now. I will not choose time monitor. If you leave it blank, it will now run for everything actually. And then here, when you say release approved lines, it will now go into allocate. Otherwise, it will now simply only print actually. Release is now going to allocate items. And there are so many other private ideas there. This you have to analyze and do it now. And there are plenty of, I don't have time. I, I know certain things, but I don't have time. It will not take another one hour for me to explain all those things. So you will now gradually understand. Right? Once when you know the basics of it, then afterwards you will now gradually understand this. So release approval line. Click on submit now. So we are now submitting the print moment request quickly before thank you. Okay, now fine. So we'll now have a look at the output. Now you can see that it will now be allocating for what? Dyna 1, 22, 22, 22, it will now allocate, but same dyna 1 because it is ascending, ascending, and ascending. It is now succeeded. Keep your cursor on this place now. And then go down now. Go there. I will now republish the output now. Click on republish. And then go to the wheel icon and then go to the export and then make it as a PDF now. And good. Go there. Do you want to that? So click on save now. Show all. <clears throat> Show the folder and then double click on it. Go there. You now come to the next page now. The next page. So you can now see Diana 1. 22, 22, 22 of lot 103 is allocated actually. So 22, 22, 22 of lot 103 is allocated. So at this stage, I will not stop because what happens, <laughs> too much of a stuff going in, it will be very difficult actually. So if you go on and see, so this is how it is allocated actually. This is just nothing but what happens is simulation. In reality, you have to think, 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 and then decide the picking rule. How many components you want to sort, sub sort, sub sort, and then what are the things on ascending and descending? What exactly you want to do? In some cases, it will not take a week's time to discuss with the end customers and then decide your picking strategy actually, because this is now going to decide how the material is going to move to the customers from your finished goods area. So you should not stock it for a longer time as well as the latest revision has to be given to the customers. There are so many multiple criteria which the end customers will now tell you how to pick it. Picking from the finished board and then bringing it to the staging area is a big process because their business, they have to live in the business now, fine. Uh, revision, the latest one who just come from manufacturing, issue it to customers, it doesn't matter. The old one, keep it here. I will now say buy one, get one free or some discounts I will now give and then clear the old stock. But <coughs> if I have to remain in the business, Give the latest one to the customers. <coughs> so that way they will know that. They will know announce a clearance sale or buy one, get one free. Or some other promotions they will know. They buy the latest revision too and then get one free of this one. Likewise, what happens there? They will not try to clear the older stock. So picking role plays a very vital role when you are talking with the marketing team of the company actually. So at this stage, I stop it now. Right? We will now continue on this tomorrow. Got it. So 
we are not completed it we will have to complete other things also fine you know because i don't want to continue at this stage but too much of a thing almost one hour i was speaking you know 